Hello, this is Stuart back again with another race from the golden era of uh, middle distance running, the uh, late 70s and the 80s. And this is 1980, Steve Ovet. I believe it's his last race of the Olympic season, 1980. Um, he just beat in a world class field at Crystal Palace. And he was running against many of the same runners in this race in Koblenz, 1500 meters. Uh, where he sets a world record. So let's see how he does it, and um, I'll provide some comments along the way. Conditions here in Koblenz for this 1500. The big danger to Oh, so you can imagine that uh, Steve Ovet had a very, um, very, very busy Blue season with the, the Olympics and everything. Steve on the outside, and straight and in the lead there goes Gary Cook, the half-miler. It's ironic in a way that um, a great international you know, at least two of his world records have come right at the end of the season. I'm not so sure After the really Crystal for that Palace race, been a lot of looking back, in this huge crowd <clears> nobody was expecting this to stadium. be a sort of really Perfect fast time in warm evening for running the fast times, and Gary Cook's gone off fast with Wessinghagen now tucked I think in that's uh, Adrian Metcalf uh, commentating from the sound of it. So yeah, we've got a um, very good field here. We've got Wessinghagen. There's a runner in there, Harold Gary Hudak, Cook who I've never even heard of before, but the uh, we'll, see what he, we'll, you know, we'll see what he does. Gary Cook, Steve Ovet. So quite a big Will field actually, and obviously they've gone off at uh, you know, quite a good pace. Ovet's looking then comfortable Harold there Rudak. in second position. Then Omar Khalifa. Then Khalifa is in and there Hillary Chuai of by an African runner. The back of that. And so yeah, they went through in about 55 and a half seconds, which is bang on really for a really fast time. It's the kind of sort of first lap that El Garou just run, you know, when he's run sort of uh, 326, 327 or whatever. So if you can keep Gary up that pace for three and three quarter the laps, this year. that's he's the kind of time you run. run all year. So yeah, the, the pace he's, was he's really good. Up, he's full of spring. Steve behind him. probably going he's through in about 55 so relaxed, and they've which is away from really the comfortable. Field, a big field. And there's more cross. You can see in the blue vest in about seventh place. Trying to lead a charge from that back. As we've seen on so many occasions, particularly with Cozy races, that well. he, he when you attempt so a mile or 1500 world record, if you go through in under 55 out seconds, then it's going to be very, very difficult. And this is quite fast running. It's as so fast they as go through 800 meters in, uh, in, in Oslo on July the 15th. 153. In fact, it's a so now the question they've is slowed on the second lap, which always happens Gary when you've got you around 55, 56 for the first lap. So they run what, about 58 the or 50 the second lap. That's not too bad. What a good job Gary Cook is doing. He just now drops out and leaves Ovet in the front. Ovet looks around. Yeah, so Ovet, Ovet finds himself at odd position. He looked over his shoulder there. I don't know if you noticed that. He does not like being uh, leading with like five over well, 500 meters to go. He likes to sit on somebody's shoulder. And um, Vessinghaga has taken it on. I think that's, that looks like Willie Wolbeck behind Ovet. Yeah, so... Good for Vessinghager if he had not taken it on. In Ovet. fact, it really it looked like Ovet was uh, inviting him the there to take it on, and he did indeed do that. Really good go. job. 250, 250 another really good split. Absolutely, and look how comfortable Ovet is looking in this position. You know, I mean, in Crystal Palace uh, when he was running, he was sort of, um, it looked like he was kind of pushing himself. But he looks actually in better, <laughs> he looks like he's in better form in this race. Still looking really easy. Comes off the bend, goes away, and he's just sort of, he's just sort of looking over his shoulder there just to make sure he's got a gap. Just, um, he's not really pushing himself, is he? I mean, he's not down on his knees, he's not bending over. He's looking absolutely fine. And this is why when people say to me that, you know, oh, you know, the great um, 1500 meters of the 90s and the noughties would have beaten the best and of them because they ran much faster times. People don't realize many, many things that in the 90s and the noughties, every single race was like a world record attempt. They were orchestrating it all the time. And 
quite often in the 70s and 80s when there was a world record. It wasn't really planned for a world record. It just sort of, uh, you know, it just, it just sort of happened because it was a fast race. Whether there was a plan here, I don't know. Um, because obviously Vessinghager did take it on there, it looked like Ovet was inviting him. Whether, I don't really know, maybe somebody in the comments, if you know anything, can say whether there was a plan for this to be a fast race, or whether it just happened like that, because Ovet looked genuinely surprised at the end there when he was told what the time was, he kind of, his eyeballs nearly popped out. I think that he felt so easy in the race, as he does, look how he goes over the line, he's absolutely, it looks like he's just jogging over the line. And it's another occasion when. There it is, Steve Ovet. The okay, so there's the uh, there's, there are the times, staggering times for those days. Um, they all actually, I think, were inside Coe's world record, which is absolutely incredible. Bessing Hargus just two tenths down, set a German record, West German record. Ovet there with the world record, could have run so much faster. Definitely could have been inside. 3.30 if he'd been pushed in the right kind of race. But, you know, in those days, uh, Ovet was just more or less content to win and just win with ease. So um, another race which to me demonstrates how good Ovet was, um, particularly as he's going over the line there and not even looking tired. We've seen, we've seen world records where people almost collapse over the line. And um, he just looked like he had so much more left in him. And given that it was the end of a long season, it's just uh, incredible, really. So, okay, that's it. So let me know if you have any comments. Thank you very much, by the way, for all the comments you're leaving. And, uh, you know, thanks for the subscriptions. Thanks for following my channel. I've had some uh, criticisms from um, some people saying that my commentary is boring, and uh, the less of it, the better. Well, obviously, if that's your point of view, then it's best just to go and watch, uh, just watch the races, which you can do if you're not interested in hearing what I've got to say. I appreciate that, especially if you feel that you already know everything about these races. But um, the point is, you're able to relive the race, uh, you know, with me reacting and watching. So even if you think that what I'm saying is boring, then you know, there is, there is some sort of added value to it for what it's worth. <laughs> Let me know if there's any races you want me to cover. Bear in mind, I only cover a golden, you know, from this golden era and only men's races. I don't cover women's races. I mean, no disrespect to women, no disrespect to any other era. But I only cover this era because it's the era that I know about and it's the era that I'm interested in. So that's it. See you again soon. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.